Okay, so what is microbiology? This is a class about microbiology, so probably the first thing that we should talk about is what is microbiology? And uh, so microbiology is the study of microbes. And that's not a very useful answer to give because then you have the next question was, okay, if microbiology is the study of microbes, was a microbe? That's a much better question, right? And it's a much more difficult one to ask, answer. So let's take a look at a few example microbes, right? So this is a microbe right here. This is actually an amoeba. Most of you are probably kind of familiar with amoebas. Uh, this is definitely a microbe. Here we have a paramecia. That is also something that you're, you're probably, you've seen before, maybe in high school biology or something like that. That's definitely a microbe. These here, these are bacteria. Uh, bacteria are actually much, much smaller than uh, either amoeba, amoeba or paramecia. But this is an electron microscope picture, so it's magnified much, much more. And uh, you can see these bacteria here. Those are microbes. Then here we have, um, these are fungal spores. And they are growing in what are called hyphae, um, which are chains of spores. And uh, so you can see that's a microbe, that's a microbe, that, that, that. Each of these individual cells is a microbe. And then we have this, uh, these here. So actually, here we have, this is a paramecia right there. But you can see these strands. Those are also microbes, or at least... So from there to, um, you know, like up here. All right, like that. All right, that's one cell, and that's a microbe. And uh, here we have, you know, right here. That goes up here. And that's a microbe. And so these are long strands of microbial cells. These are a type of algae. And they are microbes as well. So then, what is a microbe? Well, a microbe is a living organism that is too small to see with the naked eye. Uh, and this is a okay definition. It's not perfect. Uh, it's what I call a soft definition. It doesn't exactly cover all of the cases. And technically, what a microbe is is the thing that we study in microbiology. Um, so some of the things that we study in microbiology are arguably not alive, like viruses. Some of them are not too small to see, like, for instance, uh, tapeworms, which kind of sort of fall under the heading of microbiology, but definitely are, uh, you know, not too small to see with the naked eye. So what are some types of microbes? Well, um, all life breaks down into two main categories, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And I'll talk to you about those in just a moment. But in terms of prokaryotes, we have bacteria and archaea. And both of those are microbes. Under eukaryotes, all of the protozoa are microbes. Some fungi are microbes. And some algae are microbes. 
Now, remember I said that all life breaks down into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Well, where do viruses come in? Viruses technically are not alive. It's a weird thing. Like, they definitely have some characteristics in common with life. Uh, like, they evolve and they reproduce and, uh, you know, things like that. But they also have some things that we consider to be very important for life that they just simply do not have. They don't have their own metabolism. They don't have a cellular structure. Uh, they aren't generated through division. Um, so viruses are like not, not alive in the same way that rocks aren't alive, but they're not really alive in the same way that say we are. Um, so they get their own kind of category off on their own. They're definitely microbes. Viruses definitely count as microbes, but they're kind of not alive. So let's take these things one at a time. Prokaryotes. What is a prokaryote? A prokaryote is a type of cellular organism that does not possess a nuclei or a... Uh, um, does not possess a nuclei or any other internal organelles. All prokaryotes are single-celled. Uh, all of them have no internal organelles. So these are both true for all prokaryotes, not just bacteria. By the way, uh, pro, in this case, means before, karyo, Actually, I think is Greek for egg, but in our, um, uh, as far as we're concerned here, karyo basically means nucleus. So this means before nucleus. Um, bacteria are prokaryotes, so they are single-celled. They have no internal organelles. Bacteria usually have a circular genome typically a single copy of a circular genome. That means the DNA is wrapped in a circle and loops back on itself. Um, bacteria usually have a limited variety of shapes. They're typically going to be little spheres, like little dots or little rods. And bacteria typically have a cell wall made of peptidoglycan. By the way, in this course, I'm going to say a lot of things. And something you need to realize is that generally, they're not 100% true. In biology, almost nothing is 100% true. And this is what I call Josh's Law of Biology. I named it after myself. And it is that in biology, every rule has an exception, even this one. So I say, you know, bacteria have a peptidoglycan cell wall, but actually there's this one type of bacteria called mycobacteria that doesn't have any sort of cell wall because they lost it over evolutionary history. But there's still a bacteria even though they don't have a peptidoglycan cell wall. And similarly, like I said, the bacteria have a circular genome, but actually there's some bacteria that don't have a circular genome. Some that have several. Uh, so anytime I say anything, I'm going to state it like it's a fact, right? I'm going to say, all bacteria have a peptidoglycan cell wall. Or I'm going to say, uh, you know, um, all eukaryotes have mitochondria. Realize that there are exceptions to that. Now, what do I want on a test? I want the textbook answer. If I say... Do bacteria have peptidoglycan cell walls? The answer in the test is going to be yes. But somewhere in your head, you should have a little asterisk there that says, note, may not be true in all circumstances. Is It's just like, this is one of the things that makes biology different from math, right? In math, 2 plus 2 equals 4. It always equals 4. It will never not equal 4. In biology, life is weird, man. Life finds a way to quote Jurassic Park. Uh, 
life can figure out how to do things that you would just simply not predict. So, um, so yeah, like anytime I say something that's like phrased as an absolute, it's probably not quite as absolute as I'm making it sound. And then you'll go on to like more advanced courses and, and, and they'll say, all right, you remember when we told you that this, this, and this were true? Well, here's the exceptions to those rules. But I digress. These are the properties of bacteria. Archaea. Archaea are also prokaryotes. Now I'm old enough to remember uh, back when I was a kid, when I was in like grade school, you went to uh, the textbooks and they talked about the five kingdoms of life, which were Monera, Protista, Fungi, Animalia, and Plantae. So plants, animals, fungi, protists, and Monera was bacteria. And that was it. That was the highest level. Then, round about when I was in, like, junior high, high school, um, actually, before then, but this is about when it got into the textbooks, uh, they discovered that there's actually two different types of bacteria. And they didn't notice this before because they look very similar. But, uh, but they discovered, once they started doing genetics work on them, they found out that they're genetically, like, very, very different. And uh, so they said, okay, we're going to take the kingdom Monera and split it into two subkingdoms that they called eubacteria. Eu, spelled E-U, means true. So those were true bacteria. And then they had archaebacteria. Archae means ancient because they, they thought that these other weird bacteria were very primitive. And um, so you have eubacteria and archaebacteria, and they, they were both in the kingdom Monera. Then, round about the time I was getting into college, they'd done more work, and they discovered, oh, shoot. It turns out that the archaebacteria are actually closer related to humans than they are to bacteria. I mean, they're not very closely related to humans, but they're slightly closer related to us than they are to other bacteria. Uh, well, we can't really put these two things in the same kingdom if they're actually not related, really, at all. But, you know, we're not going to go put them in with eukaryotes because they're not eukaryotes. So they said, all right, we, we got a problem here. We're going we're gonna to make another level. So they made this level called it Domain, and they put that above kingdoms. And... So there are three domains of life. And those are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Two of them, bacteria and archaea, are prokaryotes. And so now you're all caught up with what archaea is. These are things they used to think that they were bacteria. We found out they weren't really related to bacteria. And so they got their own group. They're still prokaryotes, they're still single-celled, they still have no internal organelles. Most, not all, but most archaea live in extreme environments. High heat, like really, really hot places, really, really cold places, places that have really, really high salt, places that are really acidic or really basic, or in places that are um, just weird. Like, there's this archaea that lives in this lake in Arizona, and this lake has just a hugely high arsenic content. Arsenic is a poison to pretty much all living things. But there's this type of archaea that just lives in there. Not only that, but it takes the arsenic, and it incorporates the arsenic into its cellular structure. It makes DNA out of the arsenic. And that's crazy, man. And so, uh, yeah, archaea live in these really weird extreme environments we call them extremophiles uh, archaea for the most part have the same shapes as bacteria 
that's why we mistook them for bacteria for a long time. So most of them are going to look like little dots or little rods, but there are more archaea that have weird shapes, right? Um, th there's some bacteria that have weird shapes, but like there are a lot of archaea that have weird shapes. Like you see this blobby thing up here. That doesn't look like any sort of bacteria out there. Archaea usually have cell walls, but they don't have cell walls made out of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is a very specific thing that bacteria make. It's got very specific glycan chains made out of uh, uh, sugars called NAG and NAM, and it's got these very specific peptide linkages between them. Um, so peptidoglycan means proteins and sugars, but it's not just any proteins and sugars. It's this very, very specific arrangement. Archaea have cell walls, at least most archaea have cell walls, um, and their cell walls are usually made out of proteins and polysaccharides, but they're not true peptidoglycan. Some of them are kind of close, and those are called pseudopeptidoglycan, but some archaea just have cell walls that are made out of, like, weird crap, like proteins and polysaccharides. They're not hooked up in, in any way that resembles peptidoglycan. So that's a way that you could tell them apart. Third domain, eukarya. So um, eukaryotes are all going to have, for certain definitions of all, uh, but they're generally going to have a full range of organelles, specifically including a nucleus. So eukaryotes are going to have nucleus, eu meaning true, karyo meaning nucleus, true nucleus. And there are three kingdomish things that have microbes in them in eukarya. Eukaryotes also have like multicellular organisms that are non-microscopic, like I'm a eukaryote, you're a eukaryote, everything that you've, like every creature that you've ever seen with your naked eye is a eukaryote. Um, plants and fungi and all that, all of that sort of thing. Um, but there are also microbes in the eukaryote domain. Um, first, is protozoa. Proto meaning primitive, zoa meaning animal. And they're called this because they're these tiny single-celled things, but they behave like animals. They move around, they hunt, they chase after other things, they smack them down and they eat them. So they behave kind of like animals. They don't really look like animals. Protozoa usually have the full range of organelles. Protozoa typically do not have a cell wall. Not always, but usually do not have a cell wall. All protozoa are single-celled. Most are motile, which means that they can move around on purpose. Right? Non-motile cells just go wherever the water current pushes them, or wherever they happen to bounce into. Um, motile have structures that they can use to move intentionally in a particular direction. Most protozoa do not cause human disease, but a few do. So here we have this amoeba, right? The amoeba is a protozoa, and actually this paramecia that the amoeba is eating is also a protozoa. Here we have the paramecium here. That's a protozoa. This is Giardia. This is actually a human disease-causing parasite. You can see it's got this cool little teardrop shape with these flagella coming off of it. And I think it looks like it should be something that you kind of stomp on in Mario Brothers. Um, they, they also can't really see it from this angle, but they have like... Two little googly eyes and a smile. 
Um, they aren't actually googly eyes in the smile. They have two nuclei, uh, which look kind of like googly eyes, and they have this, uh, th this, this structure inside of them that looks like a bent rod, but from certain angles it looks like a smile. So they're kind of cool looking. You probably see them in lab, hopefully. Fungi. Some fungi are microbes. Some fungi are not microbes. Some fungi switch back and forth. They're really weird. All fungi are what we call saprophytes, meaning they eat dead and decaying matter. Right? They wait for they don't digest things. They don't hunt them down and eat them. Uh, they like just wait patiently for them to rot. Sometimes they will release enzymes to help that process along, but all of the digestion takes place outside of the fungal cell. And then it just absorbs the nutrients from the decaying matter. Fungi usually have cell walls made of chitin. Chitin is a polysaccharide. It's actually the same material that insect carapaces are made out of. Um, and insect carapaces and fungal cell walls are the two places where you find chitin. Insects and fungi are not at all related. This is what we call convergent evolution, where two totally separate things happen to evolve the same structure. So those both happen to use chitin. They're not related to each other in any way. Fungi can be single-celled or multi-celled, or sometimes in between. All right, and sometimes they can switch back and forth. So uh, if you've seen like mold, right? Well, mold is actually a multicellular arrangement of fungal microbes. Um, what you get is like these long, thin strands of microbes called hyphae, where you have lots and lots of cells in a strand, and then the mold is actually a whole bunch of these hyphae growing together. Um, some molds are made out of pseudo-hyphae, where you have like a big long strand that has lots and lots of nuclei in it, but doesn't actually have cell divisions between them. And so like it's multiple cells, but they're all kind of blended together into one cell. And then you can have yeast, right? Yeast are a type of fungi, and they um, are just like individual cells by themselves. And so yeast are definitely single-celled. Uh, molds are multicellular. Um, and uh, some fungi just grow as molds. Some just grow as yeasts. Some can go back and forth. They're what we call dimorphic. That, like, in some circumstances they can grow as a fungi and then change the circumstances and they'll grow as a mold instead. And sometimes they can even grow as a mushroom after that. And a mushroom is a non-microbial fungal structure, sort of. Actually, a mushroom isn't just one organism. It's a whole bunch of fungal organisms kind of growing together a little bit. Generally speaking, fungi have about the range of motion that you would expect for a mushroom. Uh, they don't really, they aren't really modal. Sometimes they can kind of grow which direction they want to grow, but that's about as close as it gets. Uh, uh, fungi are not notable for running around. Algae, right? Algae are um, photosynthetic organisms, meaning they get their energy from sunlight. Uh, just like plants do. But all plants are multicellular and none of them are really microbes. Whereas algae, which are related to plants, but aren't exactly the same thing, can be single or multicellular. Um, and they can be microbial or non-microbial. So there are some, like, individual cells that might have uh, a chloroplast and be algae, but they also like run around and they have flagella in their modal and stuff like that. Um, the organism Chlamydomonas is an example of this. Um, some diatoms are examples of this. Uh, then you can have 
multicellular or what are called colonial algae, like you see right here, where you have them growing in what are long but still microscopic structures. And so these are algae here. These are still microscopic. So they're still microbes, but they're multicellular because they're growing end to end in these long chains. Um, or you could have algae that are not microbes at all. So for instance, kelp or what we call seaweed is an algae and it is uh, generally not microscopic at all. It's just normally multicellular. Algae might have a cell wall or it might not have a cell wall. Some algae just doesn't have any sort of cell wall. Chlamydomonas does not have a cell wall. Some algae have cell walls made out of cellulose, just like plants do. I believe this particular type of algae does have a cellulose cell wall. Some algae have a cell wall made out of agarose, which is a sugar that is different from cellulose or chitin. It's in fact related to the stuff that we add to microbial media to turn them into a gel or a, 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 a solid plate. Uh, so that agarose could also be a cell wall. That's, that's usually found in kelp. Um, some algae have cell walls made out of glass. Uh, diatoms, which are absolutely stunningly beautiful, grow these intricate, tiny, beautiful, multifaceted cell walls made out of glass. So algae might have a cell wall. They might not have a cell wall. If they do have a cell wall, it could be made out of a bunch of different things. And that is what the microbe are.